When it comes to installing an aftermarket amplifier for your car audio system, you're going to need to wire it in. Now, if you want to avoid buying a bunch of individual separate wires, or you don't know what the wires are that you need, there's conveniently a solution on the market called an amplifier wiring kit. But what all is usually included in these kits and what do you use each item for? There also are some things that these kits usually do not have. What are those things so that we could be properly prepared next time we go to install an amplifier? Also, what are the things that you should be looking for when you're buying an amplifier wiring kit? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Without further ado, let's jump on in. So really quick, before we get started, this video is brought to you by our show sponsor, New Concepts. New Concepts has a wide variety of different amplifier installation kits available. There's tons of different options depending on the amplifier size that you plan on using for your system. Not only that, they have single amplifier installation kits, but also dual amplifier installation kits that include a couple of additional pieces that you're going to need to run two amps. If you guys want to learn more about new concepts and all the different wiring accessories that they have, check out the links down in the video description. In this video, we're going to focus on this kit here. So you can see right off the bat, this is an OFC kit, which stands for oxygen free copper. That's something you usually want to look out for. There's also CCA wire, which is copper clad aluminum. I recommend in all cases, if you can, to spend that little bit of extra because it's definitely worth it and get the oxygen free copper. This kit is a four gauge kit. The four gauge corresponds to the size of our power and ground wire. It's capable of handling 150 amps. So that tells us how large of an amplifier we can use. And the blue here tells us that this is a blue power wire kit with the black ground wire. The main differences you're going to see in the different kits is the wire type, like I mentioned, this is also an OFC kit, but the other main difference is going to be the current handling capability for the size of your amplifiers. So in this kit here, the power and ground wire is going to be eight gauge. I know that can be a little bit confusing if you're new to car audio, but the smaller the number, the larger the wire. So four gauge wire is larger than eight gauge. Now I've kept this kit on hand for a long time and shown it in other videos. That's why the box is a little bit beat up, but let's go through all of the different items that we have here in our kit. First off, a bunch of different small parts here. We'll get into those last. Let's focus on the main things first. So first of all, we're going to have a power wire, which is our four gauge power wire. In this case, like we said, blue, and this is OFC wire. I've already stripped a little bit of the insulation away so that you guys can see this because this is something that people oftentimes get confused about. This particular OFC wire is in fact oxygen free copper, but the reason it's silver in color like this is because it has a special corrosion resistant layer applied. Exposed copper can corrode, so by having that additional coating there, this makes this wire better to use for like a marine grade application, or even better to use in a car audio application because part of this wire is likely going to be exposed to the elements underneath the hood, and having that additional protection is valuable to prevent that corrosion. It's important that I point this out because copper clad aluminum wire, the CCA wire, will actually have a copper appearance because it's copper around aluminum wire. So the point here is you cannot judge wire purely based on how it looks. You have to actually do the research and know how it's made. Now this particular kit has 18 feet of the power wire and three feet of the ground wire. So this is something you definitely want to take into account when you're picking out wire for a vehicle. It never hurts to do a rough measurement from where the battery is located and kind of get a feel for where you're thinking you're going to run the wire back to the amplifiers just to make sure that the kit is going to have enough length. I will say for most vehicles out there, the 18 feet is going to be more than enough, but for really, really large vehicles, you definitely want to double check. As far as installation goes, you're going to connect one end of this wire to your power supply, in which case would be the battery of the vehicle, and you're actually going to need to cut this wire somewhere 
and you're going to need to install an inline fuse. Now we want this inline fuse and that cut to be as close to the battery as possible. And the reason for that is this length between the battery terminal and the fuse is technically unprotected. The reason we add this fuse is so that if we end up with any short in the wire, let's say that this wire gets nicked over time and it touches the ground, the body of the vehicle, we don't want it to short out and burn the wire. We want the fuse to blow in that short circuit condition. So as far as installation goes, keep that wire as short as possible. Make sure you mount this somewhere securely. We have several videos that we've done before on the channel on how to do that. And then you're obviously just going to connect the other end of this wire to your amplifier. Now for your ground wire, you're gonna connect one end to the amplifier and you're gonna connect the other to the body of the vehicle. You do want to verify that where you're connecting to the vehicle is in fact a good ground. I have a full video about that that you guys can check out here on the channel. And the other thing is you don't necessarily have to use this full three foot length of wire. You want this ground to be as short as possible. So if my connection from my amplifier to the ground of the vehicle is literally only that long, there's no reason that we can't chop this off, cut it and strip it and mount it correctly and connect that ground. It's better to have this as short as possible, but with that said, mount your ground in a location that makes sense. It's not the end of the world if this does need to be the full three feet. I've grabbed the fuse from the packet of little pieces there, and I just wanted to show you guys a little bit more about the inline fuse holder. I actually like using these smaller fuse holders that use these mini a &L style fuses because it's a lot easier to find a home for this small fuse holder underneath the hood of the vehicle. When fuse holders are large like this even though it's not that much larger it can be a little bit more difficult to find a good spot to use this like i said before we're going to be cutting our power wire we're going to strip away a length of it and put it inside the hole there and then tighten these set screws and then obviously these two screws here mount onto the fuse and hold it in place next up in our amplifier kit you're oftentimes going to get a remote turn on wire in this case this is an 18 gauge wire this does not need to be that large of a wire because it's only going to be transferring a small amount of current to tell the amplifier to turn on. So we already talked about our power and ground. You'll be connecting this wire to the remote turn on lead and the other end of it is going to connect to either your aftermarket radio or a device like an active line output converter that has a remote out or a switched 12 volt lead. You could technically even make your own switch if you wanted to, to be able to independently turn the amp on and off. Like I said, this is purely for telling the amplifier to turn on because otherwise you always have a 12 volt constant on that positive connection. Now this here, this is wire loom and the purpose of this is to protect the power wire underneath the hood of the vehicle. Really simple to use. It just goes around the wire like this and gives it that added protection underneath the hood. Some amplifier kits include Include this and some do not so this is something you definitely want to consider adding on as extra if it's not included as part of the kit in order to protect that wire now a quick side note these are a super cool tool to use if you do a lot of wire looming I definitely recommend these I made a full video about these that you guys can check out on the channel next up in this amplifier kit we have speaker wire now this is 20 feet of 12 gauge speaker wire here this is also oxygen free copper but you can see in this case it does not not have that corrosion resistant application. For a subwoofer install, 20 feet of this wire is likely going to be more than enough, but again, it never hurts to plan out and do some measurements in your vehicle based on where you have the subwoofers mounted. And don't forget, if you're running multiple subwoofers, you're going to need to connect the wires between the subwoofers as well. But I will say that 20 feet is likely probably not enough if you are doing something like a four channel amplifier where you're adding a bunch of speakers and if you are planning on upgrading the factory speaker wiring to aftermarket speaker wiring for those speakers, you're probably going to need more of a length of speaker wire. Again, something to consider. And finally, in most amplifier kits, you're going to get an RCA signal wire. So this gives you the ability to connect between an aftermarket head unit and send signal into your new aftermarket amplifier. In this kit, this is 16 and a half feet long, and this is a two channel wire, meaning there's two separate channels there left and right. 
It's worth noting if you're doing something like a four channel amplifier where you need the front left, front right, rear left and rear right signal, you're going to need either two sets of these wires or you're gonna need a four channel version. So depending on the amplifier install that you're doing, you may need a different kit. As far as length of this wire goes, this is 16 and a half feet long, and usually that's going to be more than enough length to connect between the aftermarket head unit and our aftermarket amplifier. But something you do want to take into account is if you are doing something like a line output converter that's going to be mounted in the back of the vehicle and you only have a short length between these two different devices, it's probably worth getting a shorter RCA wire. With signal wires, you don't ever really wanna leave a ton of it bundled up as it can likely have noise brought into the system. It would be better off in that case to add a different wire with that shorter RCA. As far as small parts go, it looks like they give us some zip ties so that we can secure the wire throughout the build. And then for the rest of the small parts here, they give us some of the different connections we may need on the power and ground wire to secure to the battery and the ground of the vehicle. If our amplifier has these style of connections for the power and ground wire, they give us those. Same for the positive and negative of the speaker wire if our amplifier has those style of connections. And the same for the remote connection there. I will say most amplifiers on the market are now using these set screw style terminals, which is good because you don't need any of those connectors. But if you do need them, it's something to pay attention to to make sure it's included with your kit. In this particular kit, they also give us a little butt connector, which we might use with the remote wire in order to connect it to an existing wire and they give us a grommet. This is important. If we do have to drill a hole in the firewall of the vehicle, hopefully we can avoid that and hopefully we can go through a factory spot. But if we do need to drill it, we can use this grommet that they provided and we can put it into the sheet metal and that way it protects the wire as it goes through the sheet metal into the vehicle. Now, even though the amplifier wiring kit you pick out is likely going to have all of those useful things, there are a few additional things that we're going to need and I just wanna point those out. First off, we're going to need a way to mount the amplifier to our amplifier rack board that we're installing in the vehicle and an amplifier wiring kit is almost never going to include the hardware that you need to properly mount the amp. So that's something you're gonna to have to consider separately. Also, it's nice that they do give us some zip ties to use, but I find that I often use far more zip ties. So it's a good idea to have those on hand for any install anyhow. Also, you might find it handy to have some additional heat shrink tubing in order to protect the different connections that you're going to be making or to have some different tapes on hand to protect those connections. You're also, of course, going to need your different wiring tools. In this case here, I have a pair of wire strippers. This makes it really quick to strip the wire insulation off of these different wires. For stripping the insulation off the larger wires, you're going to need something like a knife, or in my case, I like to use this little bit more specialized tool. Again, I have a full video here on the channel about this tool. And you might also find that you need different wire cutters and wire crimpers in order to properly crimp these different connections onto the wire. Again though, with that said, I will say that much like amplifiers having these set screw style terminals, a lot more battery terminal connections are having the set screw style terminal which is making it so that you don't necessarily need a big crimper like this, but it is something that you're going to want to plan ahead for in your installation so that you're not surprised while you have everything all torn apart for the vehicle. So now next time you go to install an aftermarket amplifier, you're gonna know better what you need and what kit is right for you. Don't forget to check out our show spots or new concepts for a wide variety of different kits. I've been using them for many years, long before I ever started the channel. If you wanna learn more, you can check out the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Mike, Jerry, Mo, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you for tuning in and watching.